Yo, I heard you liked prequels, so I put a prequel in your prequel. This is a... This is an odd one. So you have Life is Strange Before the Storm, which is in itself a prequel sequel to Life is Strange, which is now p posthumously dubbed Season 1, essentially. Even though I don't think it really was planned to have more at the time, but obviously it was a pretty big success for them, so they had to go sign up for a second one after Vampire was out or something. Uh, boom. Prequel, prequel. Now we're gonna go all the way back to Chloe and, uh, and Max being very young. Right before they, well, right before they departed, when they are all, had their whole pirate phase and whatnot. That's gonna be odd. And especially confusing if you didn't watch season one, because Max is just this character that has- that Chloe's just been angrily writing to this entire series, and has never shown up in any of these three episodes at any point, besides just being this angry receptacle for Chloe's weird journal that's not actually meant to be sent to her anyway. Alright, let's find out why she's so angry. We kind of already know. Well, I kind of already know. I don't know how much you watched. I'm not your mom. That's like, the, that's like the kind of line that would be said by the people in this game. It's infecting me. It's too late for me. Run. <laughs> Ready? I guess. But isn't your mom gonna freak? She's probably cooking with the radio on. She won't hear a thing. I bet she'll notice a hole in the floor. Trust in science, Max. Even when science means blowing shit up. That wasn't the coolest thing you've ever seen! That was truly amazing. Why are explosions so awesome? That's like asking, why are puppies cute? Some things just are. Um, I'm not sure your mom would see it that way. When she asked me to get rid of my old junk, she never specified how. But I guess I better do some actual cleaning too. I'll be excavating the closet. If you see anything else to trash, help a girl out and chuck it on the pile over there. I think she's back. Is that why there's two credits for Chloe in the credits? Is Ashley Birch playing her in the prequel? Feels like I've spent half my life hanging out in this room. <laughs> Probably because I have. I can't believe those days are all over. That's interesting. I think the strike must have been over by now. So they brought back Ashley Birch to play her in the prequel. In a few days, my whole family moves to Seattle. I have no idea when I'll see Chloe again. This could be my last chance to say goodbye. But how do you tell your best friend that you're leaving her? Chloe with her cleaning. And while I'm at it, I can take one long last look around this place. It's interesting. It was Max's last look at this place before leaving, but of course Max then won't be leaving the I mean Max comes back in season 1, but this is our last chance to it's our last time being in this room as the player of the game even though it's chronologically the earliest of all the iterations, because we're never, uh, because she's going to be dead. I don't even know if, she, if the, I don't even know if season two features the same characters or not. That, uh, 
Captain Awesome or Amazing or whatever the hell the chapter was called didn't feature a single character from the main series, so that I don't know if that's because it's just setting up that one character or if because they're going to depart entirely. So you can see the room's rearranged. There's that shark used to be over there, okay. but that bed used I to be over there, and the desk was there. The trash box. Honestly, this is a better organization of this room. Yeah. This is actually a better setup for this room as a whole than the one we've had for the rest of the time. That inlet is a place to jam the bed because it takes up so much space. That adds- that opens up the room way more. Oh well. Chloe's been beating me for a while, but that growth spurt could come any day now. Ew. Ah. A partially consumed jawbreaker just lying in, in the clothes? We bought this as a gag years ago. I honestly can't believe Chloe still has it. My god. Ugh. Concern. Chloe's had this hoodie for years. It's her favorite. I don't think she'd mean to throw it away. Now you can just stew in your mistake. I think Chloe used to call this guy Mr. Sharky. I doubt she plays with it anymore. Excuse me? Canonically, it's in the future. We can't throw that away. That was awesome. Who else but Chloe could turn cleaning her room into a pyrotechnical adventure? Gonna make it considerably harder to clean. Why isn't that a thing I can clean up? <laughs> That's explicitly garbage. People say a lot of things about the Prescott family, but... This is pretty cool. Prescott donations. I'm sure she's psyched about that later on. Hello, image that foreshadows okay. her future a little what bit. What do I see around here that belongs in the trash box? Her appearance, at least. Hey. What's your dad's camera doing in here? Dad said I could bring it up here for you to use. He's tired of watching you drool all over yourself every time he uses it. His words. Your dad is the best. Sure. Just don't ever tell him that. We need to keep him on his toes. <laughs> You're off to a great start. Actually, it's kind of cool. Wait, is that her first time using uh, a quick development camera? Did she just spawn her entire hobby? I bet Chloe's parents were freaking out when she got this letter. Congratulations, your child Chloe Price has been accepted for September 2008 admission to Blackwell Academy. We have offered places to approximately 100 students out of the 1,200 applicants. Your child excelled in all criteria of admi for admission. An open house for admitted students and parents will be held on March 26th. April 2nd is the deadline to inform us of your intentions regarding admission. Your admission reply form is included. For those who require financial aid, please contact Blackwell's Office of Financial Assistance. We look forward to welcoming you and Chloe to the Blackwell Academy family. I still can't believe you're a Blackwell Academy student. How is it? Oh, the classes are incredible. The teachers are actually smart. And the lab is legit. Petri dishes for days. What about the students? Are they as stuck up as you thought they'd be? They're... fine. Chloe, you are terrible at hiding your feelings. Is everything okay? I don't know, I just, I like hanging out with normal people. Like, you. Thanks. I guess. You know what I mean, I, I hate fake people. You're real. Thanks. I mean, I'm with her, everyone in that, almost everyone in that entire school is insufferable. 
You know what? There is no magic in the world. Trash it. This seems like a good candidate. Are you insane? That's my entire magic collection. Do you know how many weeks of allowance this cost? You haven't touched these since the fifth grade talent show. Maybe because my assistant turned out to be squeamish at the sight of fake blood. At least you didn't saw me in half. How are you planning to clean this place if you won't throw away anything? A magician never reveals her secrets. Put it back. I mean, now I have to hear justification of the this nightmare. What about this half-eaten jawbreaker? The serious biohazard. You promised me we'd finish it together no matter how long it took. Don't be a quitter. Gross. You're right. Yes! The never-ending candy lives on. <laughs> Gross. They like the... Ugh. Uh. Bad life choices. Bad life choices. Uh, oh, there's a save button. What are you doing? Your favorite hoodie. You must have thrown it in by mistake, right? No. It, it, it's fine. It's filled with holes and falling apart. That never stopped you from wearing it before. It's fine. Really. I wonder if going to Blackwell and seeing all the students that look rich and everything made her suddenly not... That's something that, like, the shame overcame her feeling of sentimentality, of sticking with the same exact hoodie forever. As usual, Chloe's grades are better than mine. I still kick her butt in P.E., though. Let this box of trash be a sacrifice to you, oh almighty Chloe Bear. Chloe and I haven't played this game in forever, and I'm pretty sure it's missing pieces. Normally I wouldn't throw away a tabletop game, but really? They have a copy of Sorry? Off-brand Sorry? Ugh, it's not even a real game. What are you doing? Adding this to the pile. No freaking way. Just because I beat your ass every time we play doesn't make it trash. You don't even make decisions in Sorry, do you? Don't you just roll the dice over and over again via the popper thing? I have not played Sorry for like... 24 years, probably. So admittedly, I've forgotten. But I feel like that game doesn't even have mechanics. Like, shoots and ladders. Or duel. Or war? Is that what it's called? Chloe, we haven't played this game in years, and it's missing half the pieces. <laughs> nice try, Max, but you can't erase your shame that easily. Okay, whenever I'm ready, I can go tell Chloe I'm done arguing about trash with her. First of all, if you want to play Fun tip to all you guys, if you want to check out a, like, children-friendly game that has, like, no mechanics, but is actually kind of fun to play, uh, the game is called The Amazing Labyrinth. It has, like, two mechanics total, and it's actually genuinely enjoyable to play. It's been broken out in my in actual normal tabletop sessions for a quick ten-minute game, because you learn it instantly, and it's kind of fun to hunt for the right move I've to make because it's because despite the fact that it's a game I should check in with Chloe now. despite the fact that it's a game that has like no mechanics you are actively making decisions every single turn as opposed to just rolling the dice and finding out who won oh, this was our first unsupervised concert together it was so much fun we were supposed to see another show next month but how sick was that show the sickest. I've been working on my moves for the next one. Check it out. <laughs> How about you? 
Any new moves? Yeah, totally. I've been working on my air guitar. <laughs> Damn, Caulfield. Save something for when it counts. <laughs> All right, back to the junk mines. Chloe's always preferred imaginary animals to real ones. Well, besides Bongo, of course. Chloe's mom wanted us to go through this pile of old clothes and find stuff to donate. Instead, we played dress up for an hour. We're taking this very seriously. It's a lot of old magazines. Chloe's had this hung up on her wall forever, but neither of us can figure out what happened to the last panel. I hope Dr. Kloenstein's okay. The Adventurous Adventures of Supermax and Dr. Kloenstein. Our crime fighting has really scared you since creating those rocket boosters. Oh, sorry, really soared since you created those rocket boosters. Of course, the power of flight does tend to make things easier. Dr. Kloenstein? And it's just gone. Huh. Bad puns. Enjoy. Whoa. Talk about embarrassing. Is it just them drawing female features on, like, what collectible... Is it collectible cards of a boy band? What even are these? I know they're the, tra the, they're the trash of culture. <laughs> How about these boy band trading cards? Super cringeworthy. Yeah, and hilarious. Remember when we gave them all makeovers? You mean when you drew boobs on all of them? I was so mad at you. And yet, our friendship lived on. So too will these cards. I guess it's true to form, Chloe's somebody who refuses to let go of the past virtually ever. And fittingly, she will not let go of any of the stuff in her room when asked to throw things out. Just like how she spent the entirety of Before the Storm not being able to let go of Max being gone and spent the entirety of Season 1 not being able to get over Rachel being gone. Admittedly, Rachel was genuinely missing, so it's kind of concerning for, on that level. But she was also like... Clearly in enraptured or, or enamored, which is shown I've by tried my best before the to storm. This place. Chloe's such a nerd. She hangs on to all her old textbooks and school supplies. Chloe keeps trying to get me to hop on her board. I'd rather take pictures. Her board is dismantled. It's just a flat board. There's supposed to be like a you know wheels. Oh, there's one. She has a spare deck. I can't believe Chloe wants to part with this. Seems so unlike her. It's like the only Ooh, thing she's willing to throw out, apparently. Live fast, die young, and go out with a bang. <laughs> Rest in pieces, doll. Seriously, I can't be the only person distracted by the fact that they won't throw out the doll remains when that's like the one most clearly throw outable thing out of all the things. All right, well, I, apparently there's a decline feature where she just tells me I've she won't do it, so I might as well see her decline place. for this one. You better not be thinking what I think you are. Chloe, I haven't seen you touch this guy in years. Why do you care? Why do I care if you throw my beloved childhood friend into the trash? I don't think that deserves an answer. <sighs> Sorry, chum. That's better. If you love him so much, why are you setting off explosions like two feet from him? <laughs> this is an abusive relationship, Chloe. I'm gonna have to step in. That's it. I'm calling off the search. If you want more trash, you'll have to find it yourself. <sighs> well, it wasn't exactly the purge mom was hoping for, but... At least we tried, right? 
Right. And now we've got the whole day ahead of us. What do two undersupervised friends with clean rooms and clean slates want to get into today? I guess now would be a good time to tell Chloe I'm leaving. Or I could let us enjoy the day first and tell her later. Oh boy. Oh boy. This decision. To color the entire day with the knowledge that they're leaving. Hmm. Well, going back, I think of two different examples of friends of mine leaving. And... Was it one example? Was Sid, who just said... I think he announced on Facebook or something that he was leaving, and then just left with his uh, with his fiance. Uh, they left the state forever, uh, and there was no particular attempt at like a hey, let's all all the people from that we that all met in college for geology and stuff like that. Let's all meet up here and have a farewell dinner or just any hangout of any kind. Uh, it was just very abruptly, somebody I knew for a few years was gone, and now they've been gone for a few years, and that just moved on. Whereas, uh, I knew Andrew was leaving for like four plus months or something like that. I, th I knew he was leaving before we started recording Zero Escape, and pretty much, I knew he was leaving for the majority of the time we were doing the podcast or something. And so you have time to think about it and process it, and you get to know it's coming and so on. Uh... And you, you have a more negative feeling for longer, possibly, but you have a much more acute negative feeling when you just find out someone's gone, and that's it. And you have time to actually say things you want to say or do anything, really. And uh, it almost feels like a betrayal on some level. If I, th I think in this specific context where they're already together in one location and, and hanging out with each other, it's almost like a weird betrayal. And it's almost like a selfishness to uh, do the entire day just maximizing your own enjoyment. Because this would be a case where Max not telling Chloe is a selfish act to maximize how happy Max's last day with Chloe is, basically. Whereas Chloe gets the short end of the thing because she doesn't get any warning about what today means. So Max is selfishly keeping that information just to herself and not sharing it. Which... Might explain why Chloe was so scorned throughout the entire se entirety of the season, but it's not a choice that I would m choose to make. Actually, Chloe, I really have to tell you something. It's... Uh, I... Don't know how to... Holy shit! Max, hold that thought. This must have fallen out when I was digging around in here. Do you have any idea what this is? Whatever it is, it looks like it came out of our pirate phase. Your powers of deduction are as strong as ever! This tape is from five years ago. It's a message from our past selves to our current selves. So we were eight years old? That's crazy. I can't even imagine what we sounded like. Ready to find out? <laughs> a vast future wayfarer! Ye have uncovered the audio log of the most fearsome pirates in the bays of Arcadia! <laughs> <laughs> Captain, Captain Bluebeard, Bluebeard and, and Long Matt Silver! <laughs> you were such so, You're in search of buried treasure, are ye? Well, <laughs> if it's treasure ye seek, be mine eyes spot. Oh, fair pirate wenches. <laughs> what? Dad, get away. We're in the middle of an important project. Oh, a project. Never mind then. I apologize. I mean it. All right, all right. Supper's in five. Wash your hands, you grubby pirate kids. <laughs> so lame. As I was saying, <laughs> if it's treasure you seek, you've come to the right place. But be forewarned. The journey will be treacherous and full of <laughs> treachers. Nice. To find the treasure of Price Isle, you will need the map from the manuscripts of Captain Bluebeard. 
Only the map can lead ye to the treasure ye seek. But be forewarned. Uh, again, only those with <laughs> pure hearts will be able to see what the amulet shows them. The amulet. <laughs> Good luck. And... Uh, bye. <laughs> Dude, that was... Amazing. I can't believe you still have that. Uh, I would never throw away something so precious. <laughs> okay, okay, forget everything. Today, we go treasure hunting. I think I know what eight-year-old you meant by the manuscripts of Captain Bluebeard. Our old sketchbook. This is where we kept all our pirate drawings. Yep. Now let's see this map. The prequel within a prequel has a flashback audio log that goes even further back another five years to when they're eight years old. We are down the rabbit hole. We're going to be negative age by the end of this game. Property of Captain Bluebeard and Long Max Silver. Sketch, Mom. I do, at some level, I almost worry that we're going to be so many lay layers deep in, like, this Inception thing that eventually we're just doomed entirely. They have a whole design here. Normal. The Bane of Arcadia. I guess being into pirates makes sense when you, uh, when you grew up as a child in a bay. Even younger children versions. Wait, that's the... Those are the same faces. Wait. I have double questions. So there's Pogo the pirate and the gang. They have, a, they have a cat. That's fine. But, like, that's the same Chloe face and Max face that that one is. Like, it's the same face exactly. Like, they just copy-pasted the character. But both of them have different color bandanas between the two pictures. So, like, everything stayed completely the same. They kept the uh, the character model and the face and everything completely identical. But they, like, palette-swapped their... their their scarves that they are then themselves wearing like the exact same way also. <laughs> huh. Pirate rules. No bathing. No boys on the ship. No sharing pirate secrets. Always share plunder. Always bury treasure. Always protect fellow pirates. Failure to obey these rules will result in plank walking. Captain's Log. Another day of plunder and destruction on the high seas. This is really good handwriting for an eight-year-old, by the way. Our just, our just buried treasure has come under attack again. The evil commander Shelley, enemy to all pirates, has threatened to take the map from us and if, if she sees it. Surely she has heard how valuable our treasure is and wants to steal it from us. We are doing our best to keep the map hidden as we continue to work on it. Because our enemies want our treasure so bad. We must make the ship... We must make sure the ship is only readable to uh, the map is only readable to us. I don't know how I messed that one up. Captain Bluebeard and Long Max Silver. The more plunder and riches, them names. This looks like a page was ripped out. I wonder if it's the map. Or it's the last page of that comic book. Crazy. Hey, check this out. This page was ripped out. Do you think it's the map? If it is, there's no way I would have thrown it out. Maybe it's mixed in with the rest of the drawings? So much for telling Chloe now. <laughs> All she cares about is finding this map. But where could it be? Literally nothing to There's literally nothing stopping you from telling her. You're just using every excuse you can to avoid it. God damn it, Max. Don't move. This angle is perfect. Why be shy? Get in here, dude. Subject and photographer. You really do it all, Max. <laughs> I try. We don't wait, we don't get to see the picture? Oh. 